My first Vegas convention, man. I slept on somebody's balcony. Still broke as a joke. It's the number one industry to make another million. If they don't want it, man, I can't make it to a point where I want it more for you. Boom, he's gone. Called it out. So what motivated you to come here? Well, it's free, free, free meal. <laughs> The sad part about entrepreneurship is you see the people got the will to do it or they don't man. You know, you, you, you can get you can get them in the right environment, the right place, the right system, the right coaching. But if they don't want it, man, I can't make it to a point where I want it more for you and then they do better. That's why I, I tell people about the 50% rule, man. I'm going to do my part 50% of the way. I, I'm going to give you 100% of me at the 50% mark. Night at the 49. You're at 49, I'm not doing anything. Meet me at 50. I'm not dragging you to 50 either. Once you meet me at halfway at 50%, now I can work with you. The reason why I'm telling you with, with local, here's why. You're on the phone with these guys in Zoom for what, maybe an hour? But they go back to their regular life the other 23, the other six days a week. It's like, uh, KT, do you ever try to learn another language in high school? Yeah. Yeah, I learned Italian when I was right before. I you learned Italian. How'd you learn Italian? I lived in Italy for two years. You won't know no shit, right? What about in high school? Okay, what are you more fluent in? Spanish that you took for two years, one one hour a day for five days a week, or Italy because you were there? Definitely Italian or Amharic, which is my native language, just because I was born and raised there. There it is. The reason why you know Amharic and Amharic, Amharic and uh, Italian, because you live there and you're and you're from there. But you try to learn mechanically. Spanish for two years in high school, one hour a day, maybe uh, what, 45 minutes a day maybe, for five days a week. The reason why you don't know Spanish more than you do Italian is because of your immersion in the language. Same thing here, bro. If they're not immersed into the environment, if they're not immersed in fast start school, they're not immersed in big events, they're not immersed in conferences, they're not immersed in MD2B, they're not immersed in these conference calls, they're not immersed in these things, they're never gonna learn the language. So that's how you're we weeding in, weeding out. Check uh -huh. I'm about what they do, not what they say. Remember, I told you, can you keep it up this week? Every dog has his day. Can you do it the second week? Can you do it the third week? Boom, he's gone. Called it out. Why did somebody fail the test? 100 questions, multiple choice. You need 70% to pass. And of the four questions, of the four answers, two are obviously wrong. So if somebody continues to fail this exam, and it's not a, really a difficult exam. I know it's a new industry for a lot of people, but is it a subject matter that takes you months to learn? So what are they not doing? I like what Steve said. Uh, uh, I wish he was here so I could tell him this to his face, but... He said something where I signed up for my licensing the day I called Bingo. It. My first wave of guys, the first 10, and they knew me at 100,000, 100, yeah, 40,000 income, 100,000 income, 250. But you knew me. As a millionaire. As a millionaire. Uh, Mackie's knew me. As a millionaire. And guess who's on a dream team call? You know, I mean, and here's the thing with Patrick. I knew Patrick has a uh, five, th four thousand, five thousand subscribers on Valuetainment. Not one point six million, but you know, the, the thing there is, is that's why you guys need to get to that level because the next wave of people know you, you're making hundred k a year. Next, the wave of people that know you now is making, you're making two fifty a year. The sooner you get towards those income goals, this business, this business becomes very easy. I mean, this is a cash, this is a cash machine. You now, you guys got a business where it's a cash machine. This business is an ATM. Why do you feel like they? Into because the financial services money making industry and it's the number one industry to make another million great industry to make a million bucks in so like what was your grind game like what was your day-to-day -day life and uh, um, like what were you like what moved you so what moved me is I had to pay my office two thousand dollars a month for office rent. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that was my boss. So my daily my daily disciplines were dropping five thousand pieces of mail in a zip code or zip codes and doing a dinner seminar once a week, doing uh, breakfast seminars where I had to drop direct mail. So my direct mail started with two thousand a month, then it went to five thousand, then it went to seventy five hundred, right? And that was just for the mail. I had to pay for the meal when they got there. It's another thousand, two thousand bucks. And the, the irony behind all that stuff is I'm feeding people who can care li who can care less about me, but want to lean on me for a free meal. I have people literally tell me, so what motivated you to come here? Well, it's free, free, free meal. Wow. Great, so uh, 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 what did what, what, you think about the information you learned today? Oh, that's pretty cool, Mike. You know, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to your, your, your uh, I'm going to another seminar tomorrow. And I, I'll, I'll compare you guys. And then on Thursday, I'm going to another one. And then Friday, we have, another, we have a breakfast meeting. So like guys in our industry would put out there and try to recruit clients Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday morning. So here I am in, in a market trying to compete with everybody in my market doing direct mail seminars. Everybody was doing that until Prudential, I'm not Prudential, Dateline, what do you suggest I do? I'm doing the same amount of business with you, but I'm getting half the results. What do you suggest I do? By the way, these mail houses, these direct mail guys, do they give a shit how much business I'm getting? All they care about? We did our part. We dropped your 5,000 pieces of mail. We let people know you're having a seminar here at this restaurant. We did our part. It's not my fault you're not getting results. You know, so you know, you know what you told me? Double up. <laughs>
<laughs> and in my desperation, I'm like, okay. Okay. <laughs> and then, and then in my desperation, I'm really pressing during the seminar. Oh, man. right. Like, like, like any business is a bad business when you're operating from a position of desperation, because I have so much financial capital on the line. People can, th people then can sense me that I'm desperate. Imagine doing a $5,000, I'm sorry, $7,500 seminar and nobody shows up. You know what they say? Well, you had a bad month. Chalk it up to a uh, learning mistake. $7,500. bucks. <laughs> and even if I do another seminar in the next month and I get a client, it's still gonna take me 30 days to get the money rolled over. <sighs> Shit, I just might get, get involved in real estate, which I thought about doing. And so there's guys, and, and I saw these guys, making. 20,000 a month, I saw this guy. You know, I'm looking at him, I'm sizing him up. And here's a couple things I'm processing. Okay, it's good now, but is it good a year from now? It's good now, but is it good five years from now? It's good now, but is it good 10 years from now? Is it, is it? How long have you been doing this? Uh, a few years. And here's the sad part. Found out that the guy died in a plane crash. Mm. Guess what? No life insurance. Really? Go fund me. The, the, by the way, those guys are still doing it right down the street from us, right? At then, uh, on, uh, by, yep, Finley and, uh, and Butterfield. I'm in there for a while, I'm in there for a minute. The guy boldly tells me, my job is to get your client's money uh, from your products into mine. Bro, that's, f that's f bold. And what happened in 08, 09? But, but the downside to that is once, once the recession changes again, the economy of our country, and here's what I realized with three recessions, banks, they tighten up, right? They tighten up and they stop lending because they got to recapitalize. So what happens if you're in a business of lending and the, and the product that you are selling stops lending? You got nothing to sell, right? Same thing, same thing happens with guys in mortgages. So I, I don't want to build a business, man, where it's, where it's fickle, but that's not our business. You know why? Because our industry is strong. We're one of the oldest industries in America. And the companies we do business with have been through multiple have been through multiple recessions. Multiple recessions. I mean, uh, uh, how how old is uh, NLG? 170 years old. They were there when America was in even 50 states. It was right after the Mexican American War, and they bought Arizona, New Mexico, part of California, all that for 15 million dollars. Like, could you imagine being a Mexican in New Mexico? I was like, what, what happened? This is I'm I'm old Mexico, not New Mexico. <laughs> I'm a citizen, bro. I didn't cross the border. The border crossed me, man. <laughs> I didn't do nothing wrong. I've been here. I'm a new man. My question is, what do you think is gonna look like? Like, what do you think is gonna happen? And also, it's a two-part question, but do uh, you think impeachment right now in politics is gonna happen? And also, if it does. What does that look like for our industry? Even if the Democrats pass it through the House, it's still got to go through the Senate. So they got to vote it on it through the House, got to vote it on the Senate. And then by then, we're into the next election, election. year cycle. So there's so many things that's going wrong with this process. Uh, the Democrats are trying to shove the Republicans. The Republicans don't want to really step up. There's only a few Republicans who wants to step up and, and, and be a flag carrier for the Republican, the, or I'm sorry, the, Repo the Republican Party. And so when, when there are going through these, you know, impeachment, this and this and that. Okay, so who takes over? Impeach him, up comes Pence, right? And then Pence may not be reelected. So then the environment that we might be looking at is the Democrats are gonna be taken over. And who we got, who do you guys are Democrats? We got Warren, we got Bernie Sanders, and we got, uh, 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 yeah, Joe Biden. These guys just want to increase regulation. You guys want to clamp down the industry. So our industry might face some tightening in terms of regulation. Uh, they were trying to pass, you know, so many things a couple years ago where, 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 where our guys in our industry were about to get forced to take a securities license. That didn't happen. And that's the bottom line. Money still needs to flow. No matter how much regulation comes in, money still needs to, to flow. Democrats want to raise taxes. So one thought process is to take the GDP and increase the tax of the, of the GDP for the people that's making money. So increase the tax. The Republican side is, let's lower the tax and get more people to be entrepreneurs and to increase the GDP. And, and you have more citizens saying, you know what, let me start a business. What happens when I start a business? I create jobs. Instead of people leaning on a government assistance program, instead of the government leaning on universal basic income, instead of the, the, uh, the citizens leaning on the government for Medicare and healthcare and, and, and just their means of living, now the Republicans say we have more citizens taking personal responsibility. Matter of fact, that was, that was Obama's uh, campaign when he first got elected. It's an era of personal responsibility, but yet people want to lean on the government. That's not personal responsibility. You know, Patrick says something, you know, on the private jet tour. He says, "Listen, look, you got to look at taxes as a compensation package to how we, how we are going to operate in America. Do I operate as a citizen, uh, employee, or do I operate as a citizen entrepreneur? Those are the opportunities and the obstacles that we have to anticipate in 2020. But here's what I know: when a recession hits, 
our business gets better. Because when a recession hits, not only do banks tighten up, companies tighten up. The, the companies can't get the money from the banks to expand their businesses. So what do they got to do? They got to lay people off. And where do they come? I mean, what, what, did, what did Uber and Airbnb officially usher in 2008, 2009? 2009. They ushered an era of part-time entrepreneurs. And so did PHP. Now, a- Andrew Yang, another, another, another Democrat, he wants to create universal basic income. And I think the number they came up with was 1500 bucks a month. Like they say, every American should get at least 1500 bucks extra. Well, 1500 but not extra, but 1500 bucks a month. What do you think, what do you think that's going to do to taxes? Yeah, they're projecting that it's going to add another two to three trillion dollars of deficit. So no matter who you are, you're going to get 1500 bucks every month. You can, be a, you can be a billionaire and get 1500 bucks a month. So the people that don't need it, get it. I mean, Social Security was meant to supplement your income. It wasn't supposed to be a primary means of retirement income. And when, when, when Social Security was created, it was in an era where people dying were dying in their 60s. Now, people live in their 80s and living on Social Security. So in other words, people are collecting more from Social Security than they ever paid in. It's funny, you know that financial survey we do? So I did a BNP and a lady there was 82 years old. First question on the survey, what is it? Do you trust? Security. She goes, yep. Of <laughs> Everybody's like, nope. How do you specifically continue to respect and go on about your day-to-day basis and still answer certain types of questions when you know other things are going on as well. Think about all the shots that MJ and Magic and Bird, Patrick Ewing, Indiana Pacers, all those guys, Utah Jack, Carmelo. Imagine all the shots they were taking. But at the end of the day, man, we're building the league. And I want you to win in your respective cities and states to build up the brand of the NBA because then we all get paid. And look at them now. These guys are getting paid in buku money. So listen, at the end of the day, it's, it's still bragging rights when it's tip off, and in the uh, the end of regulation, we got we got we got to win this game. So you know, so when I look at that type of stuff, my solve for X is taking on this industry. That's it. I'm not wavering from being a once in a generation, well at least while I'm still alive, type of type of company, type of organization. I mean, think about this right now. How long is, how long has Prime America been around? Since the 80s, right? 80s. They're an $11 billion company today. Based on the reports, they've had three years of recruiting and building and licensing drop. And now, according to their uh, the report I was reading, the, the underwriters say, finally, recruiting is stabilizing. I never want to hear that with PHP. <laughs> like, we're stabilizing. No, I don't want to stabilize. I want to advance. And, and just so you guys know, we're in the financial services industry too, right? So the, num- the number one industry to have the most potential to make mo- your millions is financial services. Hey, money smart guy, Matt Zapala here saying thank you for watching this episode of Cigars with MSG. Please drop your thoughts, feedback, even questions you'd love for me to answer in a future episode by dropping it in the comments section below. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to our channel as we journey to our next milestone of subscriber base and also hit notifications to be alerted the next time we upload our next episode. Till we meet again. Continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today.